Welcome, and thank you for joining the One Church ATL online broadcast. We continue to be actively involved in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Through your faithful giving, we continue to be able to support multiple entities, such as our law enforcement, the homeless, and families impacted by COVID-19. We thank you again for joining our service and we pray that you are blessed by this message today. All right, good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to have you all here today. Um, welcome to One Church ATL. My name is Minister JT. And um, today I want to talk to you guys about a few things. Uh, it is the new year, so I do want to say Happy New Year to everyone. We are coming up on the end of January, and I'm just so thankful to have the opportunity to be of service to God today. Um, I do want to continue on with the series of Battle Ready 2021. Uh, we've heard two phenomenal messages from both of our senior pastors. Uh, Pastor Bell taught us how to be on the offense when getting ready to go into battle, while Pastor Rod followed him up with knowing your role, you know, which is, are two important things that you need to know when going into battle. So today we just wanna continue on with that series and I wanna get this message started. So we'll start off with the scripture. Um, and as we read that, I'll ask that you open your Bible or your handheld device and open on your Bible app and let's get ready to dive into this word. So the scripture reads, I'll be reading from Numbers 14, 1 through 9, uh, the NLT version. And the scripture reads, then the whole community began weeping aloud, and they cried all night. Their voices rose in great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. Only if we had died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives and our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Then they plotted among themselves. Let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground before the whole community of Israel. Two of the men who explored the land, Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, tore their clothing. They said to all the people of Israel, the land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will bring us safely into that land and give it to us. It is a rich land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land. They are helpless prey to us. They have no protection, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. All right, all right. Um, now let us pray. Father, we thank you, God, for bringing us here today to hear your word, God, as you prepare us to go into a new year 2021, God, I ask that you be with us, God, that you walk with us, that you're constantly talking to us, God, preparing us for what's ahead, Lord. I ask that you put your hands over this church, continue to bless One Church ATL and its many members and families, God. Continue to be the shining light that we need in a time of darkness, God. Let this extension of Zion represent you, God, to the fullest. I thank you for just being with us, God, for allowing us to say that we know you, God. We love you, Lord, and we honor you. It is in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, I want to say thank you for joining us this morning uh, here at One Church ATL. Um, let's, I want to talk to you guys about what's 
transitioning from 2020 to 2021. We've, we've fought a lot of battles. We've had a, a lot of things going on over this past year and into the new year. I mean, we've, we've had a pandemic that's spread all over our country. Many people are sick right now fighting for their lives, whether they're in the hospital, connected to a respirator machine, trying to just fight to breathe, or you have some folks who are blocked up, quarantined into their own home. They're isolated from everyone. And the only thing they want to do is be around their families. I mean, there's a lot going on. And, you know, we, we just witnessed uh, a, a scene of a violent act on our our nation's capital, uh, people are just expressing themselves in so many different ways and there's so many things going on that people are fighting against. Everybody is, is fighting for a purpose or fighting for a cause or, or fighting for just for their own reasons. And so today I wanna just make sure that we are ready, that mentally we are prepared to go into battle, that we know that we have a chance to win this war. Amen? Amen. So the title of today's message is A Fighting Chance. A Fighting Chance. And what is a fighting chance? Well, by definition, <laughs> a, a fighting chance is the possibility of success if great effort is made. It is the possibility of success if great effort is made. In another text, it says a small possibility to succeed or overcome a situation. Well, in other words, uh, I decided to just mesh them together. And what I found is that it is the possibility to succeed or overcome a situation if great effort is made. The possibility to overcome or succeed a situation if great effort is made. See, I believe God is using this scripture as an example of what it looks like to have a fighting chance. Now, in the context of what we're going to read today, the Israelites had just received news that the land that God had promised them was already occupied. <laughs> and, and in that moment, they didn't know what they were going to do. They had no clue of how to move forward. Amen. See, the scripture said the whole community began weeping aloud and they cried all night. See, they were beginning to realize their greatest fear. And they started to lose perspective. <laughs> See, what happened is they began to get caught up in the emotion of the moment. And because of that, they've forgotten what they already knew about God's character. <laughs> Even the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that their fear wasn't understandable because it was, but it wasn't justified. No, it, it wasn't justified because God had already promised them victory and he promised us the same thing. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He promised us the same thing. But what happens is when we're faced with a challenge, we forget what he's already done. That's right. We forget the things he's already done. Now, in Deuteronomy 7, 17, the scripture says, you may say to yourselves, these nations are stronger than we are. How can we drive them out? But do not be afraid of them and remember what the Lord your God did to the Pharaoh in all of Egypt. <laughs> See, the children of Israel had forgotten that God had already spared them when he led them from slavery. <laughs> See, he guided them through the wilderness and led them all the way up to the edge of the promised land. <laughs> See, he protected them. He fed them. He fulfilled every promise but yet when they were encouraged to take that next step of faith into the promised land, they refused. Even after they witnessed so many miracles, why would they stop trusting God? Why would they refuse to enter the promised land when that was the goal? Why? Because they were afraid. 
That's right, they were afraid. And, and when we're afraid, we often do the same thing. We trust God with the smaller issues, but then we doubt his abilities to take care of the big situations, to the, the, the tough decisions, <laughs> the, the hard problems. See, don't stop trusting God right when you're ready to reach your goal. <laughs> if he's brought you this far, he's, he's not going to let you down now. No, he's not going to let you down now. See, the Bible says the Lord himself goes before you and he will be with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, see, I'm, I'm trying to drive something home right here. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get to a place. But what I need you to understand is no matter how big the situation may be, our God is much bigger. Amen. Amen. You have to go into every battle knowing that you have a fighting chance. And, and this brings me to my burning question. Have you already given up? Have you given up on a God that will never give up on you? Have you already thrown in the towel even though the fight has not begun? Are you already waving the white flag when you're still getting prepared to go into battle? <laughs> now, I know some battles are just tough to deal with. I know, I know they are. Some of y'all have been fighting battles your entire life, and you're tired. <laughs> you, you just want to quit, right? And, and, and you just don't know if you have enough fight left in you. Well, let me tell you, just like the Israelites, we sometimes have to face overwhelming oppositions, whether it's at work, uh, at school, sometimes even at home, you can feel overwhelmed <laughs> and helpless. Amen? Amen? But, but just like God filled the Israelites with confidence by reminding them that he was with them and that he had already saved them, we can, we can do the same thing and feel secure knowing that God is able to overcome even the most difficult situations in our lives. Look, some days I wake up and, and I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to make it through the next 24 hours. But I know as long as I wake up, <laughs> I still have a chance. I know as long as I'm breathing, I still have a chance. As long as I can stand up, I still have a chance. As long as my heart is still beating, I still have a chance. And, and see, the children of Israel, had they had already given up. They had pretty much packed their bags and was headed back to Egypt. They was ready to go. They had no plans of moving forward. They were ready to head back to where God had already saved them from. Amen, amen. But see, Joshua and Caleb saw things different. They knew that they had a fighting chance. They knew that as long as God was with them, who could be against them? Amen, amen. See, the scripture said, if the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into the land and give it to us but only if we're obedient, only if we're obedient. See, <laughs> the scripture goes on to say, do not rebel against the Lord. And when the Israelites refused to go forward into the land that God had promised them, that was a sign of disobedience, an act of rebellion. So if God tells you to move forward and you refuse to take that leap of faith out of fear, you're rebelling against him. <laughs> See, when you're going through something and you having a tough decision to make, you can't just go to anybody. You can't just talk to everyone. See, there's some people out there that have already failed in their own lives and, and so they want to take you, <laughs> they want to make sure that you don't, 
You're not able to manifest your own dreams or able to achieve your own goals. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Those people that think that, well, if it didn't work for me, there's no way it's going to work for you. Right. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all know them haters. Right. <laughs> Y'all know the term they say misery loves company. Well, you need to stay away from misery. Amen. Amen. See, let me remind y'all. Moses sent out a group of people. Matter of fact, not just a group of people. They were a group of leaders. He sent them out to the land to spy and report. Yet when they came back, there was two different reports. Two different reports. See, you had the 10 who were focused on the size of the people occupying the land. And you had the two who were focused on the goodness of the land. Amen. Amen. So so follow with me. Follow with me. So you had the 10 that focused on themselves and the two that focused on God. Isn't that something? You had the 10, the majority saw the land, they saw the people, and, and, they, and they immediately fell into fear. But you saw, had the two who saw the land and the people, but all they could focus on is what God had promised them. Amen, amen. Because see, the two saw the same thing that the ten. They saw the exact same thing that the ten saw. But they recognized God in the situation. See, and, and we have to recognize God in every single one of our situations, even if the situation seems out of control, even if it feels like it's too much for you to bear. Don't give up because sometimes that's exactly where God wants you to be. <laughs> Listen, many times God starts training you. He trains you in trouble. He trains you from a place of hardship. <laughs> yeah, he could have swept through the land and removed every living thing. He could have easily swept through the land and removed every living thing. But the Israelites needed to be reminded of how great God is and how far he had already brought them. And he continues to remind us every day of our lives. He continued to remind us every day of our lives of how far he's brought us. <laughs> but yet we get so caught up on what he's done that we forget what he can do. That's right. We we're so caught up on what he's done that we forget what he can do. <laughs> See, we we can't win the battle in front of us if we're focused on what was left behind. Let me say that again. You can't win the battle in front of you if you're focused on what was left behind. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. God doesn't want you to forget about him. That's, that's all it is. God does not want you to forget about him. He's, he's standing right there like, hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. What about me? How can you give up now? I'm standing right here. I've been with you the entire time. I brought you from Egypt. I protected you in the wilderness. I kept you clothed. I fed you. I got you all the way to the edge of the promised land. How do you forget about me now? <laughs> He's like, I, I know you're scared and, and I know you're intimidated. But remember, my grace is sufficient for you and my power is made perfect in your weakness. <laughs> Look, I, I feel like I was called today as a reminder that we need to trust in the Lord during our darkest hours. Because during our darkest hours is when he shines the brightest. That's right. During our darkest hour is when he shines the brightest. And when we're weak, his strength is perfected. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he, he's saying, remember, remember me. Remember that I am a part of your history. And if you remember that, you'll know that all you have to do is show up and I'm going to show out. <laughs> if you remember your victory wasn't in you, your victory wasn't me. Amen. 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 If you remember, you would have died in that car accident. You would have died 
in that dope house. You wouldn't have recovered from COVID-19. You would have lost everything, your house, your car, your wife, your kids. But it was me. It was me that protected you. It was me that kept you safe. So God is saying, don't give up on me. Remember who I am. Remember what I've done. And see, so often we forget God when we're faced with our biggest battles. We, it, this reminds me, it makes me think of David. David. David was a man after God's own heart. David wasn't the biggest man. Matter of fact, when Samuel came to his home, his father didn't even call him into the house. And when his father did call him, he didn't say, go get my son. He said, let me go get the boy. He didn't even address him by his name. And, and when he, he told David to go down and take these, these supplies down to the army that's ready to, to fight the Philistines, David went down and he saw that the guys were standing in the hill and they were, they were acting scared. And, and he was like, wait a minute, what is going on? And so he, he went to Saul and he told Saul, he said, look, let me fight him. And Saul said, no, nah, you, you're just a boy. You're, you're too small. And David said, no, let, let me fight him. How dare this Philistine disrespect the God of the living army? See, David knew that he had a fighting chance. David said, I don't need your armor. I don't need your armor. All I need is my slingshot, a rock, and my God. He wasn't worried about the size of Goliath because he knew the size of God. Amen? Amen. And, and, and look, I, I, just, I just want us to be prepared for what's ahead, because we're getting battle ready for 2021. So that means the battle has just begun. So there's so much more to come, but we have to be ready. We have to be ready. We have to be sure of who we are, and we have to be sure of our God. Amen? Amen. And see, what sometimes when we're faced with that tough decision, when we're getting ready to step in the battle, you, you, you start to question yourself. You don't want to do it, but you have to do it. And let me share a secret with you. Jesus didn't want to get on the cross. Jesus didn't want to get on the cross. He, he almost changed his mind. But he, he, he trusted his father. He believed in his God and he was obedient to his God. And we have to be obedient with our God. If he's telling us to move forward, there's no need to hesitate. There's no need to think about taking a step back. We need to just march forward and trust in God. Look, I just want you to remember. Remember, remember that God is with you. And if he's with you, who can be against you? Amen. Amen. Look, I hope you guys were able to receive something from this word. I know I did. So I just want to say thank you for joining us this morning. Again, my name is Minister JT, and this is One Church ATL. And I just want to pray us out so that we can move forward with our day and know that we have a fighting chance against anything that may come our way. Father, we come to you again, God. We thank you, God, for this word that you delivered today. I thank you for allowing me to watch you from the passenger seat while you drove this machine, God, while you made sure that your word was heard, God, and that your message was delivered. Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you for the things that you've done. Thank you for what you've delivered us from, and I thank you for where you're taking us to, God. I ask that you cover each and every individual on this service today and make sure that they receive your word, God, that they are receiving what it is they need to hear from you, Lord. So, Father, I thank you, God. We love you, God, and we honor you. It is in your name. Amen and amen. Uh, again, thank you for tuning in and receiving this word. Um, this is One Church Atlanta, and I just want to say thank you. You guys have a great day. Thank you for worshiping with us today. And we thank you for donating to One Church ATL through our giving. We look forward to seeing you here next Sunday at 10 a.m. in person at our Marietta location or right here on our social media page. We love you and look forward to seeing you next Sunday.
Thank you for tuning in to our live One Church ATL broadcast. One Church ATL continues to be actively involved with spreading the gospel and impacting lives in our local community. Because of your continued financial support, we've been able to support our first responders and agencies directly involved with supplying resources to those in need. Our ministry has partnered with food distribution centers to assist with the immediate needs of our community, and we've been able to address needs right here within the body of Christ. Your continued support is appreciated as we spread the gospel of the kingdom through giving. On behalf of One Church ATL, we want to say thank you for giving. We pray your resources continue to be blessed.